welcome to another edition of Inside Off-Road and we take a look at highlights of the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race which was round 4 of the APSA Off-Road Championship. There was an added element to this year's Toyota Desert Race in neighboring Botswana. The race was one of five events worldwide counting towards the Dakar Challenge and a race within a race would see a team from Africa win a free entry into next year's Dakar Rally in South America. The biggest sporting and social event of the year in Botswana again had its headquarters at Akumakwani on the outskirts of Khabarone and a welcome visitor was Dakar Rally senior official Xavier Gavari who was impressed with what he saw. The bivouac is very big, very well organized. The cars are very good looking, well prepared. The level of preparation seems to be very, very good. It's, it's a little Dakar somehow. South African off-road racing has a high profile internationally and South African exploits on this year's Dakar Rally played a major role in the Toyota 1000 Desert Race being included in the Dakar Challenge. Uh, we come to Africa because um, we launched the Dakar Challenge scheme this year with five events in South America, North of Africa, Australia and China because we believe that uh, the South Af of Africa is one of the heart of the motorsports uh, there's a great heritage in South South Africa, in, and especially in South Africa. The championship has a high level, there's a lot of preparators, a lot of good competitors, and that's a great opportunity to bring an amateur from South Africa to South America for the next year Dakar. South African driver Colin Matthews was this year given a taste of the Dakar Rally, and a return trip to South America as a competitor would be a dream come true. Yes, I was with uh, Mark Corbett this year in the Dakar, uh, I was driving the truck. It would be an, an ultimate dream to, uh, to compete in the Dakar. I think the Dakar is uh, something that we all dream about and uh, that's why we're out here to race and hopefully one day to get to the Dakar. But definitely uh, it's, a, it's an ultimate dream, yes. After winning the Donaldson Prologue that determined grid positions on the Toyota Desert Race, the Century Racing pair of Colin Matthews and Alan Smith took an early lead in the Dakar Challenge. On Saturday's racing section, the pair were plagued by traction problems and were relegated to second place when they pulled over to let the motorized team of Evan Hutchison and Donnie Stassen go past. The unfortunate Colin Matthews and Alan Smith also pulled over to let the RFS BMW X3 of Christian Deploy and Henk Janser van Vieren go past. The Century Racing crew were later to run out of fuel, effectively ending their Dakar Challenge aspirations. With Matthews and Smith out of the running, Hutchison and Stassen took over the Dakar Challenge lead in the motorized bat. They were then delayed by a puncture to hand the advantage to Deploy and Janssen van Vieren in the RFS BMW. At the overnight halt, the young Pretoria crew were a minute and eight seconds clear of Hutchinson and Stassen in a battle between production and special vehicle crews. Uh, tomorrow we're not going to uh, try and put, uh, don't put some pressure on us. We're going to try and keep the pressure off and uh, yeah, see what happens. We're, we, we're going to obviously try and keep our position like it is or gain a position. We'll just uh, try and keep the other guys behind us. Obviously Evan has also entered for the Dakar Challenge, so he's going to put the pressure on us. Um, we're going to let him pass if he wants to pass, so uh, we're just going to go out there and race our own race and see what result happens. There was early drama on the final racing section when Deploy and Janse van Vieren picked up a puncture. Hutchison and Stassen went sailing past the temporarily stranded RFS BMW and were back in the Dakar Challenge lead. Despite a late alternator scare, the motorite bat crew held on to score what was a double triumph. For former South African champion Hutchison and Stassen, there was a maiden victory on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race and a free ticket to next year's Dakar Rally. try to ignore the Dakar side of it and just concentrate on, on winning the race and obviously the two will come together but I think uh, so it's sort of all settling in now I was just talking to my wife earlier and explaining to her you know, what, what we've actually done here and it's quite an achievement and um, yeah, but I think it'll take a while for that to settle in and then and then and then try and get get that whole show on the road get to the Dakar yeah. The motorite pair of Hutchison and Stassen were on their way to the Dakar Rally and no one was more delighted than South African National Off-Road Association President Richard Schilling. Uh, the Dakar has its first official ent entrant. Uh, Evan Hutchinson won the challenge. Uh, it's great for a South African to be going to the event in Dakar at uh, the Dakar event in South America. 
uh, I think it's worth about uh, 300,000 Rand. And um, I, I must say to the organizers, to everyone, a great event has been run. And to the people of Botswana, uh, the hospitality, the way they support the event, um, we, 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 it's great. It's, I, I must say that I'm a, I'm a very happy person this evening uh, to, to see how well this uh, event has gone on. The Imperial Toyota team took a podium and top 10 placing on this year's Dakar Rally in South America with team principal Glenn Hall seeing the Toyota 1000 Desert Race inclusion in the Dakar Challenge as another feather in South Africa's off-road racing cap. Dakar Challenge is a fantastic thing for South African motorsport. It's put us on the map globally. We're already there. All it does is give us more credibility, the fact that an organization like the ASO, which control two of the world's biggest events, the Tour de France and the Dakar, are here with us taking notice of our championship in the south of the world, effectively. So I think it's good for South African motorsport. We're on the map and uh, we're just reinforcing our position. And if we have a, a bigger race from it in the future, I think that's great news. A recap now of the Toyota 1000 Desert Race in Botswana and in the production vehicle category, the Premier SB class dominated by the two-team Castrol Toyota Hilux entries of Duncan Foss and Rob Howie and Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin. The two crews gave Toyota a resounding 1-2 triumph to end a 13-year drought for Team Castrol Toyota on their own event. Former South African champion Foss and Howey scored their third win in a row ahead of teammates Taylor and Birkin, who were runners-up for the second year in succession. A terrific performance saw Duploy and Janse van Vieren on the podium in the RFS BMW, with the pair leading home last year's winners, Chris Fisser and Jarpi Bardenhorst, in the Ford Racing Ranger. An adventurous outing saw Hugo de Brain and Henry Hugo complete the top five in the Mike Karen XL Toyota Hilux. Terence Marsh and Mike Whitehouse shared driving duties in the Regent Race Racing Nissan Navara and along with co-driver Matthew Carlson were a solid sixth ahead of the second team Ford Ranger of Peter Maritzburg based Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable. After four rounds of the championship, Foss and Howie have a commanding lead over Team Castrol Toyota teammates Taylor and Birkin. Former champions Fisser and Bardenos are a further five points adrift in third. On now to team news and a feature of the APSA Off-Road Championship is the number of young drivers making a mark in the sport. Ford Racing have in their ranks a star of the future in young driver Lance Woolrich. Peter Maritzburg based Woolrich is only 20 and he's following in the footsteps of Ford Racing team principal Neil Woolrich who is a former South African champion on two and four wheels. I think it's, it's very good for the sport and um, me being one of them it's I think I'm so privileged to have this opportunity and yeah, you'll see there's there's Thomas, there's Christian, there's a whole lot of guys in the SPs and there's there's other guys, there's Jason in the Class D, he's coming through. So I think for the future of the sport it's also good to have the young guys coming through in the classes, otherwise not a whole bunch of old men racing. <laughs> Most of the guys racing they their dads have raced before them or they're in a team with someone very experienced. So you know, most of the learning you do, you learn yourself when you're out on the route, but you still, you get some tactical advice and especially a race like this, you learn from the guys that you don't push straight away in the prologue on the Saturday. You, you go, but you keep some in reserve and then Sunday's the race day. Battles were expected in Classes D and E with Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smalberger among the Class D favourites in the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. I like this event, so hopefully we'll do well, yeah, because we've usually done well, yeah. Last year we had a bit of bad luck, but the cars seem to be sorted out, so I think we'll do well this year. Among the opposition was Weichelt's son Louis, who is entrusted with race preparation of the two N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruisers. Oh, the ones we've built, I think it's low maintenance because we've got you know, businesses to run and we've built it with very low maintenance and uh, Louis done a very good job and the cars you know, sorted all the teething problems we've had, we've got sorted out now. The Donaldson prologue to determine race start position saw Louis Weichelt and Marette Besaidenot set the tone for the weekend. A clean run saw the pair coming just over a minute ahead of Mpumalanga brothers Johan and Werner Horn in the Motherland Toyota Land Cruiser. Third were Weichelt Senior and Smallberger in the second of the N1 4x4 entries. 
Dirk Pitta and Chris Klaassen's dominated Class E in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux, ahead of Johan Griffion and Willem Marais, with the force fuel Toyota pair not lacking for support out in the field. They were followed by Dana Foss and Johan Flock in the Fossies Toyota Hilux, reigning Class D champions Jack and Sardel Oosthuizen, who were fourth in Class D in the LMC Land Rover. Back at race headquarters, Dirk Pitter was full of confidence and running with a new sponsor in the 4x4 Mega World Group. Yeah, and it's a very good prologue here. We are going to race here. It's a good pass. We are going to race from early, early. The back is very difficult to get out of the way. En ons het een lekker, lekker prolog gehad. Die afstanden op die prolog, baie nice, mooi gemerkt. Uh, van een route, baie concentratie. Die boom is lekker dicht, so jy kan nie bekostig om foto te maak. Die, maar is nog een lang, 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 lang naweer. The first racing section saw the Class D battle turn into a family affair. Weichel Tuni and Maret Besaidnot continued where they left off in the prologue and maintained the pace ahead of Father Cliff and Johan Smalberger in the second of the two N1 4x4 Land Cruisers. A solid performance took brothers Johan and Werner Horn into third place in the Mulleland Toyota Land Cruiser. The Mpumalanga pair based were running ahead of Dirk Pitter and Kurs Klaassens, who had taken early control of Class E in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. The pair were running ahead of teammates Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allemann, who were battling mechanical gremlins and had dropped off the Class D pace, along with Jack and Sarl Oosthuizen, who are reliability specialists in the LMC Land Rover. Reigning Class E drivers champion Deirdre Hutting and Christo Bosman were struggling along with the Transcore Toyota Hilux running into gearbox problems. Mechanical woes were also to hit Rustenburg pair of Dana Foss and Johan Flock in the Fossies Toyota Hilux that started its racing life in the SB class and bringing up the rear of the Class D and E entries was the long in the tooth Toyota Land Cruiser of local pair Michael Tilney and Mark Docker who were running the vehicle in memory of Michael's late dad. Back at race headquarters, service crews were thrown into action with Deirdre Hutting and Christo Bosman resigned to completing the race minus a few gears. Yeah, we had a lekker way to spring forward, a lekker pass to hand off. And uh, to verloor I the third and fourth, I had 60 km in the first loop. And yeah, it was the first and third and fifth to DSP and out and weer terug. We had the time bar gehaal. And uh, now, yeah, we had not thought that we were going to om niet recht krijgen, niet zo. Moer is het maar weer. Eerste tweede en vijfde. We kijken of ons om kan naar iets te brengen. The final racing section didn't bring much by way of change in Class D. Weichel Jr. and Maret Verseidnot continued to hold sway ahead of Weichel Sr. and Johan Smalberger. Louis and Maret had a comfortable cushion ahead of Cliff Weichelt and Johan Smalberger with the two N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruisers running ahead of Class E leaders Dirk Pitter and Kurs Klaassens with Toyota heading for a clean sweep of victories in the SB Class and Classes D as well as E. A performance saw determined Deirdre Hutting and Christo Bosman see out the distance to take second place in Class E in the Transcore Toyota Hilux. Hutting and Bosman completed most of the race minus a couple of gears and perseverance again paid off for Jack and Sardel Oosthuizen who maintained a remarkable finish record in the LMC Land Rover with a fighting third place in Class D. There's a comfortable lead for Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smalberger with consistency keeping Jack and Sarl Oosthuizen in second place. Third place, Louis Weichelt and Maret Besaidnot lead the Horn brothers by a single point. Three wins in four events has given Dirk Pitter and Kurs Klaassens a comfortable lead over KwaZulu Natal crew of Rowan Lamb and Lyle Parker in the Class E Championship. The KZN crew lead Hutting and Bosman by seven points. Inside Grand Prix. Stay up to date with all the action and drama from each race. Get up to speed with the latest developments in technology. Follow the stars off the track and into their private lives. 
everything you need to know about Formula One is inside GP, burning apart to your screen. Only on your World of Champions. Brought to you by Petronas Sintium. Available at Engine Nationwide. This Saturday on Supersport. Supersport United kick off the inaugural Kauteng Challenge when they take on Big Best Bits. Then it's all to race for as the champion emerges from the pack in the last time trial of the Tour de France. And with the Olympics just around the corner, Europe's best will test their power and endurance one last time in Poland. Look back at the special vehicle category on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, and among the Class A competitors were local driver Mogre Mabile, who was making his Desert Race debut in a Zarco Light. Mogre and co-driver Zelda Nimant were day one casualties, but under race regulations were allowed to rejoin the fray on racing section two. For Mogre, the rousing reception he got first time out from the Botswana fans came as something of a surprise. I thought uh, most of them wouldn't know me. You know, when the car passes, everybody jumps up and down. I, I, I didn't expect that because most of my races I've done in, I've never done a desert since last year. And through this year, it's only been South African races. A racing section two finish saw Mogray pick up his first APSA championship point and his opinion local knowledge didn't count for much on the desert race. Not really because they, the, the, the route always changes as usual. You know, we, we, when we go for outrides, Normally, we do, like maybe after the Toyota 1000, we'll try and follow the stickers that we can, we can see. But most of the parts of it, I've, I've practiced on it before. Like many other APSA off-road competitors, Mogre Mabile's path to the national championship was via Northern Region Series in South Africa. I've always wanted to do nationals, but the reason why I did regionals was just to familiarize myself with, with the actual off-road sport. Um, which I feel I have. I'm not saying I'm experienced, I've still got a long way to go. But I always try and give it my best. As the new kid on the block in Botswana, young Mabile has his sights set on emulating fellow countrymen and former SA champion Atang Mahakhanene. I would love to. I get that all the time, that are you the Atang Mahakhanene now? And I say, no, 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 that man's got plenty, plenty of experience. I would love to be there one day, but it doesn't just happen overnight. After six attempts, Evan Hutchinson scored his first Toyota Desert race win, with co-driver Donny Stassen also taking a maiden victory in the motorite Bat Venom. By winning the Dakar Challenge and a free entry into the Dakar Rally, it was a profitable weekend for Hutchinson and Stassen, who led home Atlas Copco crew of Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson, with former SA champions Quinton and Kali Solbalt also on the podium in the elegant fuel bat. Fourth place went to the father and son crew of Nick and Ryan Harper in the Motorite Revo with brothers Lawrence and Gerard Duplessis completing the top five in Class A in Azarco. The Class A title race is a close affair with only two points separating Hutchinson and Stassen and Van Staden and Lawrenson. The Duplessis brothers and reigning champions Herman and Wichard Solvald are also still very much in the picture. The Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race is Botswana's major sporting and social event and draws huge crowds all along the route. This provides the four-wheel drive club of Southern Africa organizers and Botswana authorities with a major logistical exercise and a key role in this regard falls on Sydney Sakuani's shoulder. Okay, my role, I was one of the coordinators between, so I was linking the police and the organizers and the rescue team on the ground so that if any, either it's the medical team or the rescue organizers, if they needed to communicate or needed help from the police, how they were going to contact me and then I was going to be the one who lies with the whoever in charge in that area and give them uh, the information, what is expected from them or what help do we need from them. So I was the coordinator between all stakeholders. 
Working with the Botswana Tourism Organization and other stakeholders, Sydney's job is to make sure the race goes off without a hitch. It is a huge event. That's where now the Department of Tourism makes sure that all stakeholders, all community members, they are involved in order to make sure that this event goes well. They even assist uh, for the guys who are coming into Botswana that everything goes through well and they meet all the requirements that are needed to be in Botswana. A little APSA off-road history was made when Class B Championship leaders Colin Matthews and Alan Smith went to the Toyota 1000 Desert Race leading the overall special vehicle champs. The weekend didn't quite work out the way Matthews and Smith would have wanted, but adding interest to the Class B Brigade was the return to action of an off-road stalwart from yesteryear, with Billy de Clerc co-driving for his son Johan in the portable shade bat. Well, it's uh, once of Johan van Staden made it possible in, um, in the regional car. Uh, my dad's with me. He, the last time he sat in the car was 35 years ago. So it's going to be a big, big privilege to have my dad in the car for all time's sake. Um, so yes, it's a once-off and we're here to have fun. The face of South African off-road racing has changed drastically in 35 years and Billy de Klerk shared a few fascinating insights into the sport that these days enjoys a proud international reputation. Way back then it was wide open country. There were no fences. There was very little, as, as far as uh, people are concerned, population was small, and it was just open. Mostly sand roads, but we had so much fun. It was very, very unregulated back then, and not nearly what we see here today. You could compete, and you could have fun in a box standard vehicle like that old Ford F100. Chev Nomads did well, Ford F100s did well, and only a few years later they started with pipe frames and single seaters that type of thing. Called a sandmaster back then. So to be here today, I've been to many races since, but today I'll be competing. I'm looking forward to what's going to be. Championship leaders Colin Matthews and Alan Smith completely dominated Class B on the Donaldson Prologue to determine race grid positions. The Century Racing CR3 was nearly two minutes ahead of Richard Fuller and Dennis Murphy in the Regent Racing Bat. Next up were Swaziland base crew John Thompson and Clinton McNamara. They were having their first outing of the season, with Zarko crew coming in ahead of reigning drivers champion Keith McInnetti and Mualosi Baroto standing in his co-driver in the Zarko in place of brother Andrew, who had previous business commitments. An engine misfire hampered the father and daughter combination of Kutsia and Sandra lubas Kachni in the race Sonic Zarko, with the pair followed home by the steady father and son pairing of Johan and Billy de Klerk, who were around 13 minutes off the pace, set by the flying Colin Matthews and Alan Smith. A stunning performance saw Matthews and Smith win the Donaldson Prologue. They came in ahead of Hutchison and Stassen in the Motorite Bat Venom, but the two special vehicle entries were soon caught by a string of production vehicles. First to go past Matthews and Smith, who were politely moved over, were the two factory Castrol Toyota Hilux entries of Duncan Foss and Rob Howie and Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin. They were followed in quick succession by the RFS BMW of Hannes Grobler and Henny Testierche and the Baden Thai Services Nissan Navara in the hands of Thomas Rundel and Joan Moore. Brain, Hugo, My Karen, XL Toyota, and the second RFS BMW were next production vehicles to steam past Matthews and Smith before heartbreak struck for the crew. The Century Racing CR3 was struggling for traction, and Matthews and Smith ran out of fuel 25 kilometers from the designated service point and handed the Class B lead over to Fuller and Murphy in the Regent Racing Bat. The Swaziland pair of Thompson and McNamara now found themselves in second place in Class B, while McInnetti and Broto were delayed by a suspension problem, with a small crowd soon on the scene. Repairing a broken tie rod was to lead to a lengthy delay for the pair, whilst a frustrated Matthews and Smith were to lose more than an hour before they scrounged petrol from a friendly local.
Going into the final racing section, Class B overnight leaders Fuller and Murphy were in a comfort zone. A steady drive had also taken them into the top five in the special vehicle category, and there was no real surprise on the pair. Behind them, the charge was on for Matthews and Smith. There was never any doubt that the pair would push to make up for the lost time, and now it was their turn to go storming past on a string of slower cars. Overtaking in the dust on a narrow track was not the task for the paint of heart, and there were a few anxious moments for the Century Racing crew. final day assault saw Matthews and Smith make up enough time to regain second place in Class B and rescue valuable championship points. Progress by Macanetti and Barotto was much more sedate, but the pair salvaged a podium finish in the Zarco with day one casualties Kutsi and Sandra Labuskachny rescuing a point when they made it back into the race on the final racing section. Not so lucky were Thompson and McNamara, who found themselves listed amongst the non-finishers. At the finish, a rock-solid performance produced a victory for Richard Fuller and Dennis Murphy in the Regent Racing Bat. We had a good clean run out there. Brought it home, you know, had to look after the car to bring it home. And we're back in first, pick up the 30 points is what we desperately needed this weekend. So back in the championship hunt again. Hunt on the Class P Championship front, it's Matthews and Smith who are in a comfort zone. They have a handy lead over John Telford and Jaco Swart, who missed the Botswana event with Fuller and Murphy jumping into third. Next up on the APSA Off-Road Championship calendar, the popular Sun City 400 in the Pilansburg on the 27th and 28th of July. Catch all the action right here on Supersport, your world of champions.